Good evening, everyone. Welcome to Seven with Kevin. My name is Kevin Maynard. I'm the executive director of Quad City Arts, where our mission is to enrich the quality of life in the Quad City region through the arts. Now to do this, we work with hundreds of artists throughout the year, and our community is impacted by these artists through their performances, public art installations, gallery exhibitions, and much, much more. Now, our team has the added benefit of getting to work closer with these artists, which gives us the opportunity to learn more about them and their art. And we want to share that with you. And that is what Seven with Kevin is all about. Now, if you're tuning in live and you have a question, put that in the comment section. Tuning in live but don't have a question? Still comment. Tell us how you found us this evening. Tonight, we will be talking with two recipients of our 2021 Arts Dollars Grants. Arts Dollars is funded by, uh, funding is provided by the Hubble Waterman Foundation and the Illinois Arts Council Agency. Tonight, we will learn about two of these projects that were funded this year. First, we will talk with Teresa Babers with Love Girls Magazine, and then we will be joined by Josh Graves of The Underground Economy. First up, Teresa Babers, welcome to Seven with Kevin. Hi. Teresa, thank you so much for joining us tonight. Now, before we jump into our traditional Seven with Kevin uh, icebreaker questions, uh, let's tell everyone a little bit about Teresa. Well, let's see. I am a uh, lifelong uh, native of the Quad Cities. I graduated from Rock Island High School. I went to Illinois State University. I have two daughters and I am a social worker um, with Bethany for children and families. Excellent, excellent, Teresa. All right, uh, well, Teresa, are you ready for the icebreaker seven with Kevin round? I am ready. All right, uh, Teresa, what are you currently watching on Netflix, TV, or other streaming services? Okay, so much content, so little time to watch it all. <laughs> but right now I'm trying to watch uh, Good Girls, The Good Doctor, and Queen Sugar on OWN. <laughs> oh, wow. Excellent. Uh, now, Star Wars or Star Trek? You know, I have never seen a Star Wars movie, so it's Star Trek for me. Wow. That is a surprising answer. All <laughs> right. Where is the best pizza in the Quad Cities? You know, I'm going to have to go with Happy Joe's. I actually had my 10th birthday there and been a fan ever since. Excellent. And your, your go-to pizza at Happy Joe's? Well, you know, I do like the taco pizza, but mm. I love uh, pepperoni. Pepperoni, classic. Mm -hmm. uh, what is your favorite book? You know, I can't pick a favorite. So many books, so many years. But I will say um, I recently read Michelle Obama's Becoming, mm. and I really liked it. Excellent. You know, Teresa, that's uh, I, I'm very similar in that way. Um, I can never choose. It. It's kind of like the, the the book of the moment, whichever one I'm uh, currently <laughs> thinking about. Right. Uh, so where is your go to place for inspiration? Um, you know, I would say stories, um, mm. stories that the girls tell in the magazine, stories that I read in books, stories. Excellent. Uh, now, what profession other than your own would you like to attempt? Um, you know, honestly, I would have to say it would be writing. Um, mm. I do get to dabble in writing with the magazine, but I'm not a professional, so. Mm. Yes, yeah, always growing in that aspect. Perfect. Right. Um, if you could have a drink with any artist, living or dead, who would it be? Hmm, uh, that's really hard. Um, you know, I'm going to go with Amanda Gorman. I mm. was so inspired by her at the inauguration, and I love poetry, and I'd love to have a cup of coffee with her. Oh, my gosh. Great choice. Yeah, she was e she easily stole the show. I mean, that was uh, just empowering and, and, and really wonderful. So, Teresa, thank you for uh, doing some icebreaker questions with us. We got to know you a little bit there. So I'm, I'm curious. Um, I, I would love to dive into things about, about Love Girls magazine. So, uh, okay. you know, kind of the first question I'd like to know is, um, you know, if, if somebody has never picked up the magazine or knows about Love Girls magazine, uh, what would you tell them it's, it's about and what was its purpose? Well, I would, you know, I would say the magazine was launched in 2012. And if we kind of turn back our clocks, then we were really in an anti-bully movement you mm. know, at that time. 
And uh, also at that time, social media was beginning to take off. And so cyber bullying was becoming a thing. And um, one of my daughters was a student in high school at that time. And she said she wanted to do something to uh, help girls feel better about themselves, mm. um, uh, help them know how important and special they were. And so that's how the magazine started. It really started as a place for girls to write their stories in the traditional sense of a magazine mm. and then hand those out to their friends and people in the community so that they could hear their stories. And, wow. and that's where it started. Um, but over the years, it's really become something uh, different. We've, uh, we do still have the hard copy magazine, but you know, now you have stories online. Um, we also st tell stories other ways through podcasting, mm. through video and through art, through dance, through music, um, all kinds of ways to celebrate young women's stories. Wow. So, um, has, has, has the content changed from, from 2012 to now? How, how is it, has it evolved any? You know, I think so. I think um, initially, um, my daughter was about 15, 16 years old. And, you know, the stories were literal, you know, like mm -hmm. I was bullied and this is what, you know, someone said to me. Um, but since that time, um, there's poetry. Uh, there's also, uh, we've dealt with um, depression, family mm -hmm. stories, culture. Um, uh, you know, racism, uh, all kinds of um, topics. It seemed like with each year, the girls were and the young women were opening up and telling stories in more depth. Um, we've expanded like, you know, mentoring. And so the kind of story you might get, uh, you know, if you picked up a 2012 copy of the magazine, as opposed to if you picked one up now, uh, the content would be uh, totally different because those original uh, young women are now adults and they're mm. mentoring the young women. So it, it's definitely evolved in depth. Yeah, you know, one of the things that I, I noticed while going through uh, the, the Love Girls Magazine website was that you can see uh, just visually a, a, a growth um, from, you know, the kind of the early on covers to the the current covers. And I think we have a couple examples of some uh, cover photos um, from, uh, there we go. So, <laughs> Sure. Um, and, you know, uh, the photography has really expanded. When we first started in 2012, um, there wasn't a studio. So mm. a lot of the photos were taken outside. And so experimentation with things like lighting. Also, um, the girls get to uh, plan what they're going to wear you know the idea of the cover is to tell a story mm. and so they're thinking about that now in terms of what kind of message do we want to send what kind of photo do we want to have do we want to um, have props and so aesthetically we're considering those covers and uh this is one of my favorites um stop and smell the patriarchy and so you know a lot of thought um went into that in terms mm -hmm. of, you know, her expression, uh, color choices, the play on words with the flowers. And so um, they're able to expand and uh, use really creativity in the kinds of stories that they're trying to tell. Wow. So um, so in, in, in reference to the covers, is that um, who, who is uh, laying those out and, and, and doing the photography for that? Um, we have, um, well, at this point, initially, uh, for those uh, covers, we had to hire mm. photographers. And so we looked for female photographers in the community. And we still uh, have women who um, work with us to shoot those covers. But now we've had young women who have matured mm. as uh, photographers and they're able to uh, shoot some of the work that you see. And wow. so that's how they they've grown in terms of their skill and development. And we have enough young women participating uh, that, you know, we're not hiring um, photographers and, uh, you know, video people and stuff as much as we used to in the past. Well, that's kind of, that's, uh, uh, it's pretty incredible. I mean, you know, starting out with the magazine and now it seems to be coming, uh, you know, almost like a, a way for 
you know, all, all, all these young women to, to grow and, and learn new skills and to be able to really, um, you know, share all that. So I'm curious, you mentioned that obviously there's the magazine, there's the podcast. Uh, at, at what point did, did you, did you start podcasting uh, with love girls? Uh, we partnered with WVIK mm. um, almost two years ago now. And uh, that's when the podcasting started. And so um, it's a great expansion of the storytelling and it allows girls to not only, you know, connect with people in the community in another way, but also uh, people beyond the Quad City community um, that you can interview. And so that's great for them in terms of connecting with people across the United States as well as in the community. So it's great. Excellent. And so for, for people that'd be interested in maybe checking out that podcast, um, where's the best location for them to, to do so? You know, you can find it on all platforms uh, for podcasting. Um, and, you know, really, if you Google Love Girls, the podcast, or you go to WVIK or our own website, hmm. um, you'll find it. So it's Love Girls, the podcast. Excellent. Excellent. So uh, obviously, you know, we, we, the, the, the world has sort of changed in the past year um, as, you know, we've all kind of moved to a, a more digital presence as we're social distancing. Um, how has that how has that affected Love Girls? Um, what have you guys done during during this past year? Um, we've definitely done a lot more things virtually. Um, we've had to give up a couple of things mm -hmm. and those things have included um, our annual storytelling conference, which is Girls mm -hmm. on Fire. And so, you know, we weren't able to do that in uh, 2020, um, but we were able to do some workshops and things virtually like everyone else trying to manage the Zoom and those sorts of things. So um, it, it, 2020 was definitely different, but we're looking forward to getting back to some of those um, in-person things, hopefully sooner rather than later. Yes, fantastic. That's great to hear. So let's talk a, a little bit about your your arts dollars grant. Um, you uh, you and Love Girls Magazine put together a proposal for a uh, a media camp. Uh, can you tell us a little bit about that? Sure. Um, when we were doing Girls on Fire, it's a one day event, and we might have two or three hundred girls who come mm. to that event and have workshops. But there's only so much you can really do in a day. So we really had this desire to work with girls and depthly um, who might want to experiment with their interest in uh, media. And so that's really where the vision was kind of born for the media camp. And then our partnership with the um, new Lincoln Resource Center in mm -hmm. Davenport allowed us to have the space um, to be able to do that. And so we're going to have um, a two week camp and we're going to delve into all types of media art. That is wonderful. So, um, you know, at so as to, 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 to be involved in that camp, how would somebody uh, get involved with that? And is there an age range or, you know, um, how, yeah, yeah. How, how would they do that? <laughs> Absolutely. So um, we are working with a little bit younger participants than hmm. before, because what we've learned is that, um, you know, younger girls, they can do and they have stuff that they want to say and participate and they really can gain skills that they can use over a lifetime. Um, so the earlier you really dabble in these things, um, the better. So the age range is gonna be 10 to 14. And uh, when they participate in this camp, um, they will not only learn about photography, being in front of the camera, behind the camera, um, writing and podcasting, Looks like uh, we had a little technical difficulty there. Um, we'll see if we can get uh, Teresa back here. Um, well, uh, obviously we want you to check out uh, Teresa and, and Love Girls Magazine and keep in touch with them. I believe we've got some uh, uh, information to share on how you can stay in touch. Uh, lovegirlsmagazine.com. Uh, you can also find them on Facebook at Love Girls Magazine and Instagram, same title, and on Twitter at Love Girls Mag. Uh, please go check them out. As I said, um, their their summer camp is, is going to be coming up this summer. Uh, registration is not open yet, but it should be open in the next month or so. Obviously, their social media and everything will be able to uh, uh, tell you all of that. 
check out their website. You can find out some, some really great stories. You can get connected to their podcast and also kind of take a trip back through time, seeing all the different covers. And as you can see, the, the covers that we shared are really impressive and really well done. Um, and obviously uh, just a high quality production and what a cool thing to have you right in the Quad Cities, um, empowering young women. So, uh, oh, Teresa, you're back. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry about that. <laughs> no worries. I was, uh, you know, just kind of telling everybody of uh, different best ways to stay in contact with you guys and be able to stay in touch with uh, Love Girls Magazine. Mm -hmm. uh, so, uh, so that, yes. Uh, so do you know about when the, the sign up for the summer camp will be available? Or obviously, I know a lot of things are kind of in flux, um, but just to be able to give some people to look on their radar. Yes. So um, you will be able to register uh, for the camp starting in April. Um, you'll be able to go to uh, lovegirlsmagazine.com and find that information. And also we'll be posting information on our social media to be able to get girls registered for that. Excellent. Uh, you know, I've got a couple more questions about Love Girls Magazine and then we'll move into, you know, what my favorite section is. So uh, Love Girls Magazine uh, obviously set out to to empower women and tell their stories. Um, but it sounds like it has also been a really great platform to uh, elevate the conversation and be able to, you know, give give young women a, a platform to, to talk about things that they're dealing with in their everyday lives. Um, was that the goal set forth or has that been something that has just grown over time? Well, um, it was always designed to be a place of empowerment. Uh, but I think it's evolved over time. And so, as I was saying, we seek to tell the stories in a variety of ways. Mm -hmm. And, you know, one example, you know, I'll just use an example. We had a young woman, she was on the cover of the magazine. Um, she was local and she had created um, this project called Switching to Switchgrass. And I am not a scientist, so I'm not going to attempt to explain it. But basically, it was a way of burning cleaner fuel mm. um, um, in India, where her family was from. And so um, we we're able to tell her story, not just about her accomplishments, but also about her family and mm. her culture and living in this community. And then as part of our uh, Love Awards, what we do is uh, we have artists who take a look at the young woman's story and then they might create poetry or dance or art or something to celebrate her. And so uh, it was uh, one of the ones I thought was really interesting. So we had a local college student who was an artist. You know, music was playing and they're painting, but you're not seeing anything on the canvas. And at the end, they throw this purple glitter and you have the outline of her face and the grass and the background as dedication to switchgrass. And then she gets the portrait that, um, you know, that was created for her. And those are certainly not things that we could have foreseen, you know, the different levels of telling the story and honoring the girl's story when we started. It evolved over time and became more creative because of the young women and their ideas. Wow, what a what an incredible story or an incredible experience to be involved with. Uh, I have to imagine that that o o over the years you have collected uh, some in, in incredible stories and learned some incredible things about women in our community. Oh, absolutely. And, um, you know, we've had uh, a young woman, I think we have her cover she had a liver transplant and her mother was a living donor, you know? Mm. So in essence gave her um, life for the second time, you know? And wow. uh, so that picture, I believe she's on the cover, she's raising up her shirt and she's showing her scar. Um, and uh, so I think the confidence, um, you know, for her to be able to do that, um, and to be celebrated. Um, also, I believe we have a cover of Mariah on her throne, as we call it. She had really struggled with depression. Her mm. uh, brother had committed suicide and um, she opened up and talked about that. And she even got to tell that story on national television on the Harry Connick show. And wow. so the stories have been able to reach even, you know, and uh, those covers and that artwork beyond the Quad Cities. And that's really exciting. 
that's really exciting. And yeah, um, I think we have done more than 75 covers. Haven't checked the numbers lately. <laughs> so a lot of, a lot of um, young women who were able to write, express themselves and be celebrated. So um, it's, it's wow. pretty awesome. And their inspiring stories are what keep me coming back every year to help with the project. Yeah, what an incredible thing um, to be able to do, but also what an incredible thing to have right here in our community. I mean, that is absolutely astounding. So my favorite part of every interview is being able to move into the the advice section. Um, so Teresa, what have you learned going down this path that you would like to share or that you wish you would have known um, starting out on with Love Girls Magazine? You know, I would say that what I've learned is that publishing a magazine is really hard work. And um, it's not, uh, you may have a huge publication like, you know, Time Magazine or something like that, but the process that you go through in terms of writing and photography and everything is the same. So um, I think somehow we managed because of the size of our community <laughs> and who we were, that it would be less work. So um, it, it's a lot of work. But what I would tell people is that, you know, when you are uh, creating things artistically, um, it really adds value to your life. Mm -hmm. And I think that's why we have young women who started with the project in 2012, and now they've graduated from college and they come back to work with young, younger women. And I think that that's because there's something about creating something that is meaningful and can give purpose to your life. And so um, I would say if you're doing a project like that, it's worth it. And even if you can't see it in the beginning, um, when you look back over what you've created, it's quite fulfilling and satisfying. Wow, that is, I. I, I have to 100% agree with that. I mean, we, we've we seen it time and time again here at Quad City Arts and I've seen it throughout my life. I'm just watching people um, be, being in, in the creative community. Uh, obviously it's, it's, it is very rewarding for them, um, but it has, as you mentioned, it has long lasting effects and it has uh, effects that you may not think about at that time. So uh, yeah. quite we incredible. Can, yeah, we can, um, you know, take down websites and things like that that are online. Um, but long after we're gone, somebody can see a piece of art or pick up a book or a magazine and those stories can um, tell themselves long after we're gone. Very, very true. Uh, Teresa, I would love to continue this conversation and I do look forward to having you back on here after you guys have your media camp in the summer because I'd love to, you know, learn more about that. Uh, and just, you know, be able to talk through that that experience of doing that two week camp. So, uh, Teresa, thank you so much for spending some time with us tonight. And I wish you guys uh, great success on the media camp and obviously uh, on, on future issues and podcasts uh, with Love Girls magazine. And thank you. And thank you uh, so much for your support. The media camp would not be possible without QC Arts. Excellent. Well, I'll tell you the committee that went through all those was very impressed and they obviously uh, loved it. So we're, we're looking forward to, um, you know, playing, uh, playing the small part the weekend to, to make that happen. So we appreciate that, Teresa. Thank you very much. Yep. You have a great night. Uh, just as a quick reminder, I'd love to put up uh, on the screen again how you can stay in touch with Love Girls Magazine. Uh, again, there's their website, lovegirlsmagazine.com, their socials. Uh, go follow them, check them out. Uh, thank you again to Teresa for joining us tonight. Uh, next up, uh, we have Josh Graves from the Underground Economy joining us. Um, and I will just, you know, I'll actually just say, Josh, welcome to Seven with Kevin. Hey, Kevin, how are you? Thanks for having doing, me. Oh my gosh, uh, it's great to have you on. You're doing well tonight. Uh, Josh, before we jump into the Seven with Kevin uh, icebreaker questions, uh, let's tell everybody a little bit about yourself. Uh, yeah, so I am from Denport for a long time. I graduated from North, uh, Denport North here. And um, over the last like nine or 10 years, I've been working uh, with local uh, independent artists from, from the region, um, from locally to Cedar Rapids, Iowa City, and just um, trying to like um, build the hip hop community and just um, trying to do the best I can to mix and master and 
you know, I had a recording studio called Graveyard Studios, and um, now I'm kind of evolved to uh, building a, a co-working space or a creative hub for uh, all types of creative um, entrepreneurs and creative professionals to uh, take their art and kind of bridge that uh, gap between art and entrepreneurship. So this project is my, my first um, collaboration um, as the new brand, and I uh, look forward to working on it. So thanks. Excellent. Excellent. Well, we're definitely going to jump into a lot of that uh, here in a moment. But for right now, are you ready for the seven with Kevin lightning round? Definitely. Definitely. All right. So, Josh, what are you currently watching on Netflix TV or other streaming services? So I'm a really big uh, Marvel nerd. So I'm watching mm -hmm. uh, Falcon and the Winter Soldier. And then uh, on the side note, I've been watching this show called The Irregulars, which is like a a group of like kids in London that are like pretty poor and on the streets and are like solving Sherlock Holmes, like helping him. And it's kind of interesting. So um, yeah, so that's kind of what I'm watching now. Oh, you pretty much nailed exactly what I'm watching as well. So <laughs> I'm right there with you. <laughs> uh, Star Wars or Star Trek? Okay, so again, back to being a nerd, I'm gonna say both because um, there's some entities of Star Trek that I like and there's some of Star Wars that I like, so. Um, yeah, I like which, which did you start on first? Um, I mean, I, my dad was always really into it. So I started like, you know, the originals, um, mm. pretty early on. And then my, he also was really into Star Trek. So, um, recently I kind of like started like discovery on and off, but I never really got into it. So I, I don't know. I'm, I'd be really too busy to watch a lot of television, but totally understand. Totally understand. Uh, best pizza in the quad cities. Okay, so this is a very complicated issue for me um, because honestly, like, I feel like the subcategory of like the pizza uh, culture here in the Quad Cities is amazing. Like, that's one of like the biggest reasons to live here. I think. Mm -hmm. Like, I mean, there's the classics like you know Happy Joe's and Harris and you know and their derivatives, and then the new schools like you know Low Pies and mm -hmm. stuff. But, like, I mean, I love it all. Like every time I get pizza, I order something different, and it's just like. As you, you know, COVID, you've been ordering a lot of food. So, uh, you know, I've been able to try them all over COVID. So. Yeah. Yeah. Excellent. So, uh, well, a uh, question. Um, how do you feel about breakfast pizza? Um, I, I enjoy it sometimes. Yeah. I mean, it just. And, and, and where, where has the breakfast best breakfast pizza, in your opinion? I think Happy Joe's pretty nails it out of the park. My wife doesn't like it, though. And I don't think I've had Casey's enough to really understand if I like it fully. But yeah, that I the only reason I bring that up is uh, because uh, Alex, who is running things um, uh, obviously for us right now, uh, we have an ongoing uh, debate on who has the better breakfast pizza, okay. and I will always fight for Casey's in that one. So okay. I've only had it like twice, so I don't know. I've never really tried Casey's too much. <laughs> Excellent, uh, Josh. What is your favorite book? So again, um, I'm kind of nerdy. So I'm like I, my favorite book is. Um, really mo like a modern rec uh, recording techniques that I got in uh, college. And it kind of like was my Bible as I started my business. Mm -hmm. and, like any time that I didn't know what I was doing or like wanted to learn something more, like how to place the mic or just different things that would help me in my career, it just kind of like was my go-to. And so like, I've always just kept a, a copy of that even as they like uh, continue to evolve the editions. And um, yeah, I mean, that's just kind of my nerdy audio audio side is just like, Oh, okay. It's going to give you like the tips on pretty much anything you can think of. So nice. Well, obviously it's, it's, it's paid off for sure. <laughs> um, where is your go-to place for inspiration? Now I really enjoy, like uh, when I go to the gym, I like the sauna and just to like sit in there mm. or the steam room or something like that. That's just like really my place to like clear my mind and really just like process whatever I'm thinking about or whatever. And it's been, uh, that's just my place or, you know, during COVID it's hard to get to the gym. So I've been like, turning the shower up really hot, you know, and just you know, <laughs> imagining that I'm in there. So, <laughs> but yeah. Excellent. Uh, what profession other than your own would you like to attempt? So, I mean, I'm afraid of heights, but I've always really been into stars. So I, I, I'd say astronaut, but I don't really think that I qualify <laughs> for those, uh, some of that. So, yeah. <laughs> Excellent. Uh, if you could have a drink with any artist living or dead, who would it be? hands down Bob Marley. Like one of the reasons that I really got into audio engineering is that I was a big Bob Marley fan prior to really getting heavily into music. And uh, 
I watched a documentary one time where one of his audio engineers explains just the uniqueness of recording in a moment that no other engineer and that artists have. And that feeling is kind of what drives me in the mm -hmm. music and really that connection between audio engineer and producer and artist um, is unique. And, um, you know, some of the moments that he recorded some of his hits are just like, no one else can really experience that besides those three people. And those those moments in, in art are unique to me, you know, so that's really one of the biggest things I like, yeah. Excellent. Well, that actually leads uh, right into, uh, you know, some questions about the underground economy and, and, and you. Uh, so you obviously you touched a little bit about the underground economy at the, at the beginning of this. Um, but you started uh, you started with with Graveyard Studios. Um, what was there a catalyst that that made that transition where you decided that you wanted to move more towards the underground economy approach? And what was that? Um, so over the course of recording, I you know, I recorded people and I mixed their songs and it sounded good. And then I get to the point where I realized that that wasn't really all that these artists needed in the Quad mm -hmm. City. Um, you know, and I, as we started to develop as well, like more than just musicians or, you know, vocal artists would uh, come to our spot. It would be photographers and videographers and the di variety of different uh, mixed media uh, professionals um, that are solo entrepreneurs. And I realized that they are, you know, ultimately the you know the underground art scene so to speak and then you know they're really have this internal economy that they're working together you know like i record this song and then you know that person goes and then shoots that video and then they want to photo shoot and then it's just like the circle of people that are in the quad city community that are really um you know self-sufficient and creating amazing art and you know and doing it um without as much of a platform as people would notice. And um, I've seen that, you know, they're doing amazing things. And I just, mm -hmm. want, you know, every day I learn and meet new and new artists that are doing amazing things. And I'm just continuously like, uh, just humbled by the amount of talent in the Quad Cities. And um, at the same time, I, I feel like there is a gap as far as the entrepreneur side of artists and I, I heavily believe that, uh, you know, that's a way to empower um, artists to pursue a career, um, not only just, you know, doing things as a starving artist, so to speak, um, but really to develop a career and a business and a brand, um, utilizing the skills and the talent and the, and the creativity that they are already doing. Um, mm -hmm. Just, you know, learning just different things that uh, apply to general businesses and, you know, using that to, to excel and to succeed, you know. Yeah, no, I think that that is actually something that uh, we talk about here at Quad City Arts and we talk to other folks about is that, you know, obviously creating art is a fantastic thing, um, but at sometimes uh, somebody in that relationship sort of has to run that like a business, um, both to allow the artist to continue to create and also, you know, be able to eat. Um, but also to so that other people can can hear the stuff or you know be able to consume that art, and you are you said uh, that you were humbled by the talent in the Quad Cities, and I am continually impressed by that. I, I always am, am discovering or hearing something or seeing works that are being created locally that I, I had no idea about. Um, so. Yeah. Obviously, I, I I love what you're trying to do, be able to to elevate those voices and be able to uh, spread spread that word. Um, so is is also part of that goal, obviously, to to promote that and let people know, but also to sort of play that educational component to so the artist can take that on themselves as well. Yeah, uh, I mean, education is a big um, aspiration for us here. Um, we're kind of getting our foundation starting. We just finished uh, construction, as I mentioned earlier, and um, so. You know, some of our future aspirations is to even uh, start like an incubator for um, the arts and um, mm. you know, kind of just continue to build, you know, peer mentoring and just different networking events and different events that offer supplemental education as well as just like, you know, you might want to learn about Adobe Premiere or just different audio and video editing programs or whatever the case may be that might help you. You know, I think in, in art, I just realized that the more tools that you have, the better that you can create. And so my goal is just to provide as many tools as I'm capable of providing to the, mm. the community here. Um, and I hope as my business evolves, um, I hope that it continues to evolve with the needs of the artists here in the community as well. Fantastic. Uh, 
Excellent. So I'd like to talk real quick about about a little bit about underground economy, some of the services that that you offer. Um, can you we talk a, a little bit about that? Yeah. So um, some of the things that we do is we offer men, uh, memberships for different uh, a variety of memberships, uh, starting at twenty five and up to you know uh, like about one two fifty or so, just depending on what you really need and uh, how often you want to come. Um, in addition to that, we have a podcast station, a recording studio. Um, we're in the works of putting a, a you know a photography studio in here as well, and so just you know we have conference tables, desks, and just you know a place to meet clients, uh, you know connect with other creatives, um, and work on your own craft or collaborate with others as well. So you know we have a content editing station that will provide all the latest uh, software to use that you can, you know, if you don't have these things, you can come and utilize our, our computer mm -hmm. and work on, you know, say you have a camera and you have footage to edit. Well, you can come here and edit it. You have a, a song you want to edit. Uh, you can come and do that. I mean, there's a variety of different things that you can utilize here in our space um, that will really excel the, the, the creative process in my mind and uh, it really uh, help polish and create a better end product overall. Um, and so for me, it's just like about building this community. Um, you know, the memberships are just kind of an ends to a mean, but for me, I really want to build this community of people that are sharpening steel, so to speak. And I know that sounds like the cliche thing to say, but in the arts community, when I see other people succeeding, that makes me want to go even harder. And so, um, you know, if I'm over there and someone's creating a song, I want to stop what I'm doing and go see what they're doing. And, you know, and that part of, that, that feeling that I got from Graveyard Studios and as we continue to develop was that, is that, you know, one artist is in one room and, and another artist is in a whole other room. And there's this, this unique energy that is just like they're creating all at the same time in the same proximity and there's so much going on. And then, you know, at one point we had two studios. So like we had one person recording one song and then the other person in the other studio and then they would switch and, you know, get on this and they would collaborate and it's like, those kind of things are, are so empowering to uh, the progress of not only what you can do as a whole, but I feel like, you know, we can all do a lot of things individually, but as we collaborate and we combine and we work together, uh, we can accomplish so much more. And so um, I just, I'm really adamant about this. Uh, as you can tell, I, I, I'm very passionate about it. <laughs> yeah, no, for sure. Um, but you're, you're exactly right. I mean, we always uh, use the term or the saying, you know, a, a rising a rising tide raises all boats, um, which is, it's it's sort of the same concept because the better that our artists do, the better our community does. And the more that we go see and are able to, you know, see these artists perform or see the works that they're creating, it sparks ideas or it sparks, you know, really fun collaborations. I mean, we've seen, you know, uh, you know, performing artists who partner with uh, graphic artists so that they can, you know, create their album art or create their music video or, you know, but it just, it, it, it sort of feeds itself. And without that, I mean, that, 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 well, as that, that underground economy goes away. Um, so you need, you need all those things. So, uh, I'm, I'm right there with you. And I, I love that you're very passionate about that because yeah. that is exactly what we, what we need in this community. And it's just what we need in the arts in general. So, uh, thank you for that. So speaking of collaboration, let's talk about your arts dollars project. Uh, so you, you put forth, a an application that I believe that the title was, I mean, I think we just called it like a QC collabs and it was just about you know, to be able to put artists to collaborate. So can we, uh, let's, let's talk a little bit about that. So, I mean, over COVID, I feel like there's been, a, you know, obviously we can't get together as much and there's limitations that we can do as, you know, collaborations and working mm -hmm. together. And so in, when I saw the opportunity for the uh, arts grant, I was like, you know, I really want to put us together and put the different people that I see, not only in the QC region, but just overall across Iowa, just doing great things. And so, I really wanted this to be a collaborative album, but in addition to that, I wanted it to be a, um, a mixed media art. So we'll have uh, music videos and supplementary like micro content and a bunch of different things that just highlight the creative um, people in, in the area. So, you know, like uh, one of the things that I'm really gonna uh, do while we're in production is say, uh, so say someone's doing something and everyone like is like, man, that's amazing. You know, we're gonna call them out and make them make a video that offers tips to the people that are watching our project and engaging in it, because I really want this project to be um, engaging. And I also wanted to show artists that, 
you know, you can collaborate with other artists and you can create a project with, you know, with what you have with you, you know? And so um, I just feel like there's a lot of uh, entrepreneurs and creatives around here that can offer tips from their journey that can provide a lot of insight into upcoming and aspiring artists as well. Uh, we're, you know, regardless of if they're just a musician or a photographer, or whatever the case may be. So mm. we'll be collaborating with uh, filmmakers, um, young creatives out of uh, Cedar Rapids, and then also um, Hunter Shot Films and Musk, uh, out of uh, Muscatine. Um, and we'll also be working with the Vibe Factory. They're another production team, um, Bian and Crelo, uh, Crelo, and a bunch of different variety of artists. Um, I have so many to announce, but we're just kind of like, um, taking it step by step and really like uh, letting the pre-production phase uh, start next week. And so uh, I'm really excited about it. Uh, there's going to be a fifth, like 12 to 15 songs on it. And uh, we want to make it uh, a concept album. So it's going to be like in uh, pretty much like um, stage one, two, three, kind of like a play almost. Mm -hmm. um, and so um, we really want to describe like not necessarily resiliency, but like, you know, that feeling after um, you overcame something like you when you you know when you're before that you had to deal with it you didn't know if you could get through it and then afterwards you're like oh okay i did and now you're like okay i can get through anything so like that kind of feeling and uh is what i want this album to be it's going to be a top 40 like um top 40 like um hip-hop album um sort of like dj khaled you know they joke that i look like him but you know uh, when i have my beard but um, so it's going to be similar to that, um, but I wanted to be to highlight the the, the talent that's around the Quad Cities. So um, there's going to be a lot of vocalists, a lot of um, um, singers and hip hop artists, and just a lot of different talent. I'm excited to show you guys what we're working on. Yeah, that it, I mean, it sounds very exciting. I also love that you you didn't just limit it to the Quad Cities. You kind of made it a, a more of a regional entity, but it also helps create those connections uh, with artists and with artists uh, to artists outside of our community. Uh, yeah. Almost like letting them know that hey, there's some really cool stuff going on here in the Quad Cities. Uh, you're gonna wanna you're gonna wanna get connected here right now. So yeah, yeah. and so I think we're gonna also be doing like submissions for specific songs um, mm. through contests and different ways to get engagement through artists that we might not be aware of as well. So um, and all of these artists will be paid um, in addition to some of them um, providing in kind services that are matched. Um, in addition to your guys' grant, my hopes are to contribute a matching 1500 um, just for cost and different things mm -hmm. to really provide additional like supplements for the project as well. I just think that um, together we're going to create something really fun and, uh, and, I, and I, I think it'll be good. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I mean, it sounds like it's 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 uh, it's going to be a fun outcome, but also it sounds like I think you're going to have just as much fun creating that. So that's yeah, exciting. I, I like, yeah, I like kind of like doing all the, the pre stuff and the like the little the little nerdy stuff like that in the eyes and just mm. making sure that every part is, is in, in order. So yeah, it's going to be fun. Excellent. Well, Josh, do you have a, I mean, a, a tentative timeline? Do you think that, that you know when, when this will be available uh, to the uh, public? So we have, um, I'm hoping to have it uh, finished for alternating curtains, mm. um, which Excellent. we are in the works right now to have a 45 minute set there. Um, so that will be kind of like our reveal, so to speak, of the project. Um, so yeah, I'm excited that would, uh, I think that's, uh, late August, I believe. Um, yep. yeah. So yeah, that's our goal, uh, for the finalized, uh, reveal, so to speak. So. Excellent. Well, that, that is very exciting. Please, uh, obviously keep us posted. Uh, we'd love to be able to let people know to, to, to come check that out. I mean, what a, what, what, what a cool thing to, to see unveiled. Uh, yeah, yeah. so excellent. Well, Josh, um, as I mentioned earlier, this is this is my favorite part of of seven with Kevin. It's the advice section. So, Josh, uh, what have you learned going down this path that you would like to share, or what uh, or what do you wish you would have known when you started? Um, I guess I've kind of learned that, like, you know, what you imagine uh, you can kind of do is kind of limited. So don't set uh don't set a cap on what you can achieve like continue mm. to uh push and to continue to like evolve and grow with uh you know as you as you grow as a person you're you're gonna grow as an artist and as a uh you know a brand or business whatever you are and um i think that setting um high 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 expectations of yourself and and understand that you really can do anything if you really uh put your uh, mind to it and grind and really uh you know have a good intentions, I believe, you know? 
Yeah. yeah. So Josh, when, when you started out doing um, either Underground Economy or Graveyard Studios, uh, did you imagine you would be putting as many hours into it as you are? Uh, not, no, not really. I mean, but I, I'm, I'm, I'm loving it. Like, I can't really complain. Um, you know, now that I have kids, it's, it's great to kind of be able to go back and forth and, mm. you know, put, uh, show them things that they, you know, like they don't know about music and just different things. So it's really it's really uh, fulfilling to kind of put those hours in, you know? Yeah. Also how, how cool for your kids. I mean, to be able to, the, the experience that you're giving them right now, and they're going to be talking about this when they're older. Like it's just, you know, of course people have these experiences. So yeah. <laughs> yeah. Awesome. yeah they asked to come like every week. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, why wouldn't you? So yeah, they're four and two. So they're like, yeah, yeah let me see it. You know, so, yeah, it's fun. <laughs> Excellent. Well, uh, Josh, before you go, I want to put up on the screen how people can stay in contact with the Underground Economy. Yeah, um, Facebook, uh, Instagram, Underground Economy QC. And I also have a community Instagram, which is Underground, Underground Economy Art, which will highlight uh, our different members and different. I'm just going to use that as a platform to highlight different uh, creatives in the area and different artists um, uh, as part of a blog and just different um, ways to keep people engaged with what's going on in the QC art scene. So uh, that's yeah. excellent. And if people want to utilize any of your services, uh, is the best place to go to the website or yeah, uh, any, of the, any of the website or social media work. I'm pretty uh, active on there. Um, so yeah, just hit me a message and I can uh, do any, you know, if you want to utilize our space or if you need any media consultancy or anything like that, I can help on different things as well. So if you have a podcast or anything like that, I've been doing a lot of that over COVID is helping people produce their podcast uh, from beginning to end. And that's been a lot of fun. So um, I look forward to seeing what the podcast community here is building to. Uh, it's it's growing every day. So I'm excited. Yeah. Yeah. Excellent. Well, Josh, I appreciate you so much uh, taking the time to talk with us tonight. Um, you are doing some incredible work at Community, and obviously we are excited about your Arts Dollars project, um, but we're also just excited um, for all the things that you're offering at the Underground Economy. Thank you so much, Kevin. Uh, have a good night. Yes, you too. Uh, so folks, please keep in touch with, uh, with Josh and Teresa, uh, check out their websites. Um, they are doing incredible things in our community and they are what makes, uh, the quad cities, the quad cities and what's uh, going to grow our, 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 creative economy and also just, uh, provide us all with, uh, more cool things to do and participate in. Uh, so thank you, Teresa and Josh for joining us this evening. Uh, again, follow their social media platforms, check out their websites. Uh, as you can see behind me, we have another incredible exhibition on display. What's up behind me is our high school art invitational. Uh, it's going to be up for the next month. Tomorrow night, uh, the gallery is going to be open late. We will be open until eight o'clock. We will be closed on Friday, uh, but come out, check it out. Uh, there's a uh, something of around 150 uh, works of art on display, all from uh, area students and a selection from the, their instructors as well. Uh, tomorrow, we will also be uh, debuting our video for our award ceremony. Typically in a traditional year, this place is packed, uh, but uh, obviously um, we're gonna put that out online this year. Hopefully next year we'll be back to in-person and uh, everybody can crowd in here as well. We will be back uh, in two weeks uh, with artist Brian Buckles on 7 with Kevin. Um, Brian is also uh, an artist who's on display in one of our galleries. You can see his work at the Quad Cities International Airport uh, in the gallery space there. The Quad Cities International Airport is open 24 hours a day, so you can go there anytime to check out that work. Also, I'd like to give a quick plug to uh, KDBQC and QC Live. Um, they have been showcasing uh, some artists, and on uh, that is on Fridays at 3 o'clock. Uh, and you'll be able to check out um, some great work from our local artists. Uh, this week, uh, we'll, they'll be talking about the high school art uh, exhibit that's behind me. Uh, that is a lot to remember, uh, and we still have a lot of things going on. So don't forget to follow us on Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, and YouTube, and visit our website, quadcityarts.com. Thank you all for tuning in tonight.